Hey everybody, this is Wanda Alger and today is Wednesday, February 22nd. And as you can see, I am not alone. I have a very special guest with me, Andrew Whalen. I'm gonna switch our pictures here. Uh, and I gave you a heads up that I was gonna be interviewing Andrew. He is a prophetic minister from the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And believe it or not, we actually met on Facebook, I do believe, because we both have Facebook pages. And I think it was about two years ago, Andrew, that I saw your post uh, popping up and you would share prophetic dreams and interpret them. And they just caught my attention because they reminded me of the dreams that I've had and just your heart for the body of Christ and the strong gift there. And then little did I know that the Lord was going to give you some prophetic dreams with me in them. And so you reached out to me. And so this is really kind of a divine connection here in the spirit. And uh, Andrew interviewed me about uh, two months ago, I think. And then he actually had me teach uh, on, at his Vanquish Academy. And I'm going to have him tell a little bit of his story and what he and his wife Kelly do there. Uh, but I'm just really excited about today. We're going to talk about prophecy, the prophetic movement. I've got a list of questions for him. Uh, and hear what the Lord's been saying to him about the church and the nation. So uh, stay tuned, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So awesome. with that, Andrew, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you so much, Wanda. I'm so happy to be here. Always so that, good to see great. you. Well, why don't we start off first by you just telling folks a little bit about who you are, your testimony, how you came to the Lord, and specifically how you began to operate in the prophetic. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, I, I was really blessed as a young boy to have um, a great mom and dad. And uh, my mom and dad both grew up in the Catholic Church. And they ended up, uh, well, really, my mom had a very powerful encounter early on. And she uh, was really saved through um, some of the Catholic charismatic movement uh, that was wow. taking place. And so um, growing up, my my mom, uh, my dad was, you know, a good man, just didn't have maybe the spiritual encounter that my mom had had. So it took a lot longer for him to really come into that uh, relationship with Jesus. And um, so growing up, my mom was that real spiritual leader. And, um, you know, I remember that from the earliest of, of my memories I knew the Lord. I, I mean, and growing up, I would just have these times where I'd say, Jesus, I just give you my life. I want you in my heart, you know, all of these things. And, um, you know, I have videos of me praying in the spirit when I was three years old. And oh so goodness. I don't even have a first recollection. My mom would just pray the baptism of the Holy Spirit on me. And she said, you know, you would just walk around singing in, in the spirit, praying in tongues and all wow. of these things. And um, so, you know, kind of funny. Um, but you know, it, another funny thing is growing up, I had an issue of saying, shut up to people. Um, and so <laughs> I don't know what it was. I just love to say, it. I I'd say it all the time as a little kid, I'd be like, shut up, shut up. You don't, you look at me wrong. Shut up. <laughs> and, wow. Uh, that warrior was already coming out, huh? It was, it was there. I had fire in me and you know, it was really funny, but my mom, I, I remember this as a young boy, you know, she tried to discipline me in a number of ways. None of it worked. You know, I'm still going and, and shouting, shut up. But I do remember finally she got an idea and she said, Andrew, okay, I see that you, you've got a lot of fire. You want to say, shut up. I'll let you say it, but it has to be in the context of this song. And she said, um, I don't actually remember the full song, but there was one line in there. It says, your word is like a fire. Shut up in my bones. <laughs> and <laughs> so uh, growing up, I just I, I sang that song as a little boy. And that was like whenever it got to that part, you know, your word is like a fire. Shut up in my bones. I just shout that. I'd be like, your word is a fire. Shut up in my bones. I did not realize that I was prophesying over my life from a young age. And so I'm thinking, Holy Spirit, that was a brrilliant strategy to give that to my mom. Um, but so, you know, early on, isn't that awesome? Wow. Um, so, you know, early on, that was kind of like, I, I just could see, you know, I look back and I see how God weaves things together, how he's starting to paint a, a picture. And, um, you know, as I got older, um, what I realized is that um, 
I just had this desire for God, you know, and I, um, but I also, I also recognized that um, I got to an age where I didn't have a lot of maybe male um, spiritual leadership in my life. And so when I got to the age in my life where I found myself trying to navigate certain areas of uh, growth and temptations and all of these kinds of things, I just felt really like, uh, like I struggled a lot. Mm -hmm. And so high school, um, right into the beginning of college, I, I just was struggling. I was struggling, struggling with lust. I was struggling with how do I overcome? And I finally got to a point where I, I said, I am so hungry for God. I've got, mm -hmm. I've got to find him. I can't do it on my own. Like I'm, I don't have the ability to overcome without him. And I knew that I needed a real deep life changing encounter with God. And so, um, I remember early on in my college years, um, I lived with college, uh, football players and I wasn't playing football, uh, but these guys were rowdy college football players and I lived with them. I was just trying to survive in that environment because these guys were party animals, you know, um, but that actually drove me to to seek God because it I, I had to be either hot or cold. It, it, there wow. was no in between in that environment. And I got into that place of prayer. And I tell you what, God began to encounter me like, I mean, his presence showed up. I began to discern and hear the voice of the Lord. The Bible says that we are his sheep and his sheep know his voice. And I began to, wow, God's speaking to me. And he began to give me dreams in the night. Um, I remember with one of my football players, he was trying to actually live. Uh, my roommate was a football player. He was trying to live for the Lord. And I remember early on um, while I was living there and, and early on when I was really going after God, one night I had a dream and I woke up after that dream and my roommate said, hey, I'm going to go to the gym. Um, you know, it's early in the morning. He said, I'm going to go get a good workout in. And he gets in his car and he starts to back out. And suddenly the dream comes rushing back to my mind. And I said, oh my gosh, he's not going to work out. He's going to this girl's house that he knows is bad news. He knows it's trouble and he knows he shouldn't be going there. And in that dream, I saw that he didn't get back home from after that time with the girl because he got in a car accident. Oh my. And so I ran out to the driveway and I, and I flag him down, I wave him down. And I said, bro, you are not going to work out. I just had a dream. I know where you're going. You're going to this girl's house and this is what you're up to. And I said, and you better change your mind about it right now, because the Lord already showed me that if you do this, that there is an accident uh, that is waiting to happen. And he is trying to prevent you from going there right now. And yeah. so my roommate looks at me, he turns pale as a ghost and goes, Oh my goodness. You're right, bro. That's exactly where I was headed to. He goes, I knew, I knew it was bad news. So anyway, that wow. was kind of one of those little, Oh, wow. <laughs> God wow, speaks. God. Wow. So, um, you yeah. know, it was that, that began to like, uh, stir my heart and a couple other things took place. One, um, and I hope I'm not going too long on it. <laughs> this is good. It's it's stirring the uh, the hunger for how God speaks, you know, and how he uses us. Yeah. Well, I amen. I I remember specifically I was crying out to God, Lord, I want to go to the next level with you. And I didn't honestly even know what I meant, but this was in college and my times of prayer. And I and I remember specifically one day crying out for about an hour, God, I want to go to the next level with you. Just take me deeper. There's more. Mm -hmm. Um and I remember going to Gold's Gym to work out after that time of prayer. And a stranger walks up to me at the gym. He's got long hair and, you know, just he looks at me and he goes, hey, man, are you a Christian? I said, yeah. He said, well, I believe the Lord just spoke to me about you. Can I ask you a question? I said, yeah. He said, are you wanting to go to the next level with God? And yeah. <laughs> I, wow. I'm like, I didn't expect <laughs> this. I didn't expect to go to the gym and have someone come and say that. He said, I said, bro, you have no idea. He he goes, man, the Lord told me to tell you, if you just continue to seek him as you are, you will, he will bring you into the next level with him. Wow. And uh, so that was, you know, all of this stuff was stirring my faith. So finally, 
during that same season of college where I was seeking God, I got to this point where I said, Lord, what, what is, who am I? What am I called to? What, you know, I, I burn for you. I want you, but you know, what is my calling in life? What's, mm. who am I? And out of the, you know, just, it was just quiet. And all of a sudden I'm, I hear, I mean, it wasn't an audible voice, but I just hear it in my spirit. And he says, Deuteronomy 18, 18. Well, I didn't know what that was. And so I, I turned there and uh, it says this, it says, I, I, I have called you out from among your brethren as a prophet. And essentially it says you, I I'm commanding you to speak the words I give you. And so that was, mm. I mean, I knew that I knew that I knew the Lord had said, I'm calling you as a prophet. Now, the interesting thing is I, I grew up not even, I knew about the prophetic, but I guess I just didn't even know, is that, is that allowed? Can I call myself a prophet or, you know, I'm like, but you're God, Lord. So I'll, I'll let you say what you want to say, if that's what you're saying about me. But I didn't tell anybody that for a long, long time. Mm, uh, wise. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Because that's oftentimes the way it is when you're called. It, it's it's a long time. And the same thing happened to me because it, he wants it to settle in our own hearts first. It doesn't mean that now we have permission to go out and, and uh, advertise. He's just saying, this is who you are. Exactly. And that's kind of what it was. And then honestly, it became a journey for me after that point. One of the things that I believe the Holy Spirit put on my heart was to pray for prophetic mentorship. Mm. And, you know, uh, I was like, God, if, if you're saying I'm a prophet, I sure don't know how to be one. Mm. You know, yes, I can read the Bible and I can get wisdom and insight, but I mm. kind of need some like real life, hand, you know, life on life help because I just don't know. Mm. And um, and so one of the prayers I prayed, I said, God, I remember this. I, I would cry out to the Lord. I said, Lord, send send the prophets into my field. And I said, yeah. send the greatest prophets, your greatest friends in the earth, send them to me. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I figured, prayer. <laughs> right. I figured, hey, if we can ask the Lord anything, I'm going to ask him big. Come on. Uh, so. Hey, but you know, you were you're humbling yourself and you're asking for help. So God's got a smile on that. Absolutely. And so the, the amazing thing from there was that I just began to see how he connected in such supernatural ways. Mm. I mean, he brought prophets out of the woodwork. I, I mean, I don't even know how they showed up or ended where I was. I, I, I still look back and I'm amazed at the, the type of connections. He brought me people that had um, used to run he brought a spiritual father in my life that used to run closely with Art Katz and Leonard Ravenhill and David Wilkerson. Mm. And so, um, you know, I got I got a, a good dose of the fear of the Lord around that <laughs> prophetic stream. Yeah. Yeah, really. Wow. David Wilkerson. That's yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, you know, um, mm. I saw that take place. And then and then God would send me. um other prophets, I, I I think I call them like, you know, secret service prophets because they're just hiding and doing high level secret ops for the Lord. Um, one man actually was in the actual secret service. Wow. And, um, he showed up at a meeting. I went to a meeting in Ohio. He shows up at the meeting. Nobody knew who he, who he was. And the, we asked him who he was. The Lord said to him, um, you're you're to go to this meeting. Uh, for a connection. And so he shows up there and he prophesies over myself and, and another friend of mine, uh, but it began to develop a relationship with him and come to find out he had worked uh, as a CIA uh, op and a secret service for five mm -hmm. administrations. Wow. Uh, from Carter to um, Bush, I think maybe, yeah, Bush. Mm -hmm. And during that time, um, he was taken by the Lord many times into realms of the spirit to see uh, terrorist attacks, to see um, all sorts of crazy wild things mm -hmm. where he would get intel and actually help literally uh, help national security. Wow. And so, um, it, wow. you know, and I, I had to like take notes. I'm like, God, what are you doing? What are you yeah. saying? Why are you yeah. putting these people in my way? Yeah. And it made me realize that 
you know, I'm just, yeah, I'm a young guy, Lord. I think you're building, paint, trying to paint a picture for the future. Yeah. Well, you know, and I, want, I want to stop here, just put it on pause for a minute, Andrew, because I think, you know, what you've been sharing is so critical, you know, that we're not going to get into the details or the weeds about what's the difference between just having a gift of prophecy and being called a prophet. But because of your testimony is just such a perfect example of those who are called to be a prophet, many, many times you see it from early on in life, because even in the book of Jer Jeremiah, you know, it says from your mother's womb, I called you as a prophet to the nations. And this often happens with those who are called, you know, in that field as a prophet there, it, it's just a mark, you know, from early on, you're not looking for it. You don't even understand it. It's just there. Uh, I mean, I've ha I had similar experiences too. always knew that God was there, always had these epiphanies and, and experiences, you know, and so that will often mark it. And, and also just your heart posture. I just want to commend that, Andrew, mm -hmm. uh, you know, because so many people want to be a prophet mm -hmm. and we're all called to prophesy, obviously. And so we all will have a measure of that, you know, within, within us, carrying Christ with us. But just the fact that you wanted someone to speak into your life is so huge. I mean, we, we really need that today, you know, of that acknowledgement that, Oh yeah, I may have a gift. It may be powerful, but I need help. I want, I want to steward it well. So no doubt that's what brought the favor of the Lord on your life, at, you know, and he bring all these people to you. So I just wanted to insert that in there, but uh, go ahead and continue. Uh -huh. Oh, thank you for that. I'm, you know, I, <laughs> I think that's probably one of the saving uh, graces that God's given me is that I realized, man, I'm, I'm, kind of just a big kid and I need a lot of I need help <laughs> we all do hopefully yeah. you know we should never stop needing that you know because yeah. we all see in part and so yeah getting all those other pieces uh, highly influential so I mean obviously even in the testimonies that you've shared it, it, God speaks and yeah. it is that heart hunger you know that desire um and, and we need to ask for it, you know, because that was your heart. You, it seemed maybe kind of supernatural that you had yeah. that. But I think it should be a testimony to everyone that if we're hungry, just to cry out to the Lord, I want more. Uh, and, and when we press in, I mean, just like scriptures say, he's he's like a loving father. I mean, even human fathers want to do that, even if they don't aren't always successful. But how more does he want to, you know, meet those needs? Um, so I think that's that's incredible. So, yeah, yeah go go on um, before we switch here and to talk about the prophetic movement. But uh, okay. this is yeah, really so, awesome. You know, in. It was about 05, 2005, about a year after I got married that um, I met Lou Engel. And um, I, know, I think I can tell that you met him because yeah. you were just <laughs> rocking back and forth. Well, I'll tell you, Lou. <laughs> I was just in Colorado Springs with him this this whole past weekend at a conference. So you, you start getting around Lou and you don't even know why you're rocking. You just rock. So, <laughs> so for um, anyone that's wondering or doesn't know who Lou Engel is, yeah, he's just, it's when the spirit is on you, you just got to move. So <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So, uh -huh. you know, and I was really blessed, you know, he, um, well, I, without going into the long story, I had very, uh, like supernatural dreams to follow this guy. In fact, an angel came into my dream and said, you see that man over there? And the man's, you know, going like this. And I said, yeah. And the angel goes, who is that? I said, that's Lou Engel. And the angel says, never stop following that man. Mm -hmm. And so I woke up from, uh, from the dream and the Lord says, follow him as he follows Christ. And, Good. uh, you know, so I just, I did. I, I really connected with him. And um, over time, well, I'll tell you what happened is when I started to connect with Lou, I was already a dreamer, but I would say it was more like a sprinkling of dreams. Mm -hmm. um, after I connected with Lou, it was like a, you know, a, a waterfall of dreams and wow. things just went to a new dimension. And he even told me, he said, hey, once you connect with me and once you start to run with me, your dreams will go to a whole new level. And mm -hmm. that's exactly what happened. Wow. And so I actually began to dream for Lou specifically. Uh, I, I've been dreaming, dreaming for him for the, you know, ever now, when since you say that. for him, does that mean it, that in regards to his ministry and what he does? Yeah. His ministry, his personal life, his assignments, um, wow. 
you know, and, and Lou really kind of, he, he recognized that God was putting me in his life as a spiritual son. And, mm -hmm. um, and so he really, um, received me that way. And I received him as like, you know, like a spiritual father. And, mm -hmm. um, and so, um, yeah, so I would dream and, you know, it would just be funny because life would take a, take us in different directions, but God would just continue to link us in the spirit. So I would have dreams for him, not even knowing what's going on in his world. Mm -hmm. And he'd be like, you have no idea how, yeah. how this is directly speaking. So yeah. it was just neat to see that. Well, and I think what you're getting on for, again, for those that might be not be familiar with Lou's ministry, I mean, he's an intercessor and, you know, even as a child, what you were doing, it wasn't just prophesying. You were also interceding yes. because this is a part of your ministry, you know, with prophetic warriors. Uh, yes. And so just to add that component in there, because ultimately, you know, when I teach about dreams, most of the time they're given for prayer. Yeah. You know, and, and those who really postured themselves to pray and, and to stand in the gap, that's when I've, I've seen an increase, I know, in my own life in, in that intercessory component. Yeah. So when you say that, you know, all these dreams, you've really been standing in the gap for him and, and praying for him in that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I think that's one of the, the key things I've found about the prophetic. Um, there's a scripture in um, it's Jeremiah 27, 18. It says, but if they are prophets and if the word of the Lord is with them, let them now make intercession uh, to the Lord of hosts. Yes. So, that's um, you know, I think that's a key. What, what I found is um, this, this is from my experience is that if I don't, if I don't steward the prophetic dreams or words in the place of prayer and intercession, um, mm -hmm. they, they, it's kind of like they don't develop well or, you know, yes. you know, and I feel like God adds to, he brings more depth. He brings more clarity when we steward these things in prayer and intercession. So now, I'll, I'll just ask when you steward them, do you journal them to write them all down? I, I do. I, I tend to. Yeah. Um, there are times when I haven't and the Lord, you know, I think the Holy spirit, I'll tell you, this is a funny story. I have a good prophetic friend um, and he dreams also for Lou and for several others. <laughs> and he's a high level dreamer. And I'm, I'm talking like this guy dreams like he's in, in the throne room. And, um, he, he got in a really bad habit of not writing his dreams down and a prophet called him out, not knowing anything. A prophet called him out and said, Hey, I want to tell you the angels have a controversy with you. And uh, the pro my prophet friend says, what, why? And this prophet who called him out said, you're not writing down your dreams. Wow. And you don't know the kind of battles they have to go through to get you this kind of message and revelation. Oh my and, goodness. And you're not stewarding them. You're not, you know, writing them down and remembering some of them. And so it, it was like, oh man, that was convicting. I'm like, wow. you know what? Yes. I need to write these down. Yes. And yes. so, yes, I do that. I write them yeah. down. Because I, I, I stress that, you know, when I teach on this, because I saw an increase in my own life, the more that I journaled, the more I got. And there's something about, there's an added anointing that I've experienced in the writing itself, that more comes as I am writing. And sometimes uh, more comes as I'm speaking, but that writing is very powerful. So I just, I wanted to make sure that people got that, you know, who want to grow in dreams you know, they, they haven't ever dream, dreamt before, or they just don't remember. And that's what I tell people. No, you're dreaming. You're just not positioning your heart and spirit to receive that before you go to bed. You know, you, you pray before you go to sleep, you have a notepad beside your bed. You know, you prepare as soon as you wake up before you fully wake yourself up, just pause, you know, and start writing down whatever you, you know, you remember. And that's how it starts. And, and the more that, like you say, you steward it, it will grow because it's like a, a language, Yes. You know, we each have our own language, those symbols that mean something to us. And so God is really growing our spiritual language in dreams. I'm sure you found that out as well. And oh, so yeah. it's kind of, we're building a library, yep. you know, of this language uh, that, of communication between he and, uh, he and us. So, yeah. Yes, uh, that is really important. I think that's so key. Um, I think, I think it's a very rare thing if you're just dreaming 
all the time and you have just this great understanding of all of it you know it, it's very rare when you're just dreaming at a high level uh, immediately because i do believe that god he develops trust um, yeah. be because he's not going to entrust you with some of the finer things of his heart or about people or even about nations or whatever mm -hmm. um, if you haven't walked out a little bit of history with him and yeah. You know, because there is something he does. He looks for that faithfulness. And um, and so it, now it is it, it's to that point where I'm like, I get so excited to to go to bed um, and have a dream because I know I know there's so much like amazing things he's going to reveal and mm -hmm. whether it's for individuals or my family or even me. And so I get so much in the nights. Uh, through dreams. It's yeah. awesome. Well, talking about the dreams and, and just even kind of transitioning uh, into how others are uh, experiencing these gifts or not experiencing these. And of course, we know that one of the reasons that the Lord connected you and I is just because of the generations, you know, that uh, it's in, it's always been in my heart to help the next generation, you know, grow and to kind of prepare the way. And, yeah. you know, even in your testimony, you, it's, you have a heart of honor, you know, towards the mothers and fathers, those who have gone before. And so this is part of uh, what I wanted to talk about, you know, even in your generation, those of your peers or who you see coming up, you obviously have a hunger. Is that same hunger, you know, amongst, you know, in this next generation, especially within the gifts of the spirit? I mean, if you look at the broader body of Christ, I mean, I have my own perceptions of what I see, but I don't know what it's like for your generation, uh, you know, is it still just in a pocket here within the charismatic church? What do you see the Holy Spirit doing, you know, in terms of these gifts of the spirit and specifically prophecy? Yeah, well, I honestly, I feel like, well, I'll, I'll bring up a dream. So okay. <laughs> I had a dream where I saw uh, basically the wheat and the tares uh, coming into fuller maturity. But but what it was is I saw it was two, it was two dimensions. It was, it was the realm of God's prophetic uh, growing and maturing. And then it was the realm of darkness, like the prophetic, quote unquote, um, more of like the psychic dimension uh, growing. Okay. So the counterfeit, you mean? Counterfeit. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So the counterfeit um, move of, you know, supernatural wisdom or whatever was right. growing at the same pace that the, um, mm. the God's, you know, prophets and the prophetic was growing. And so what I see happening is this generation is, is like starting to open up and understand that we live in a very spiritual realm. You know, we live in a, a realm that can access spiritual realities. And right. so I see a, a huge hunger. I'm seeing it, it break down like I'm sure there's still your pockets of resistance within denominations and things, but I am seeing a different kind of hunger across denominational lines. You know, it's almost like that stuff doesn't hinder this generation as much. And they're just like, we want to know God. We want to have personal encounter. We want to hear from him. We believe he speaks. We believe he has something to say about our world and about lives and and so I'm starting to find an, a very encouraging hunger, especially in the body of Christ. Um, and I'm also seeing it in the world itself. And they're saying, we're starting to believe in the reality of this. In fact, I, <laughs> I've done a whole lot of prophetic evangelism, going out on the streets, just talking with people, praying with people. And I have found, I have found the world so receptive Mm. I've found more resistance from the church than I have the world. I like yeah. people in the world are kind of like, yeah, oh, wow. Like we yeah. believe in, in things of the supernatural, you know, they're hungry for it. And do so, you think that some of that is because evil is, is so out there, witchcraft in the occult is now so prevalent in this nation that people understand there is a supernatural realm. Do you think that has something to do with it? I sure do. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I think you can't, I don't even know. It's like you can't even look at any sort of media or, or entertainment or TV shows anymore without some sort of supernatural dimension to them. So, right. I mean, there has been a real, uh, I don't know, conditioning, even from 
media entertainment to begin to receive that spiritual reality. Yeah. And so I do believe it has created an appetite. It's created a hunger for it. And honestly, you know, I think that the current, um, I don't know how you want to say it, but just the light that the prophetic has, uh, that's been shined on the prophetic through some of the the patriot, um, governmental realm, all that's Mm kind of come to the surface through Trump's administration. I think it's just shined a light on so much. And I Mm -hmm. feel like, People are not as resistant to, you know, the fact that God, you know, speaks today and that he will use his, his vessels. He'll use his prophets. And yeah. So, I mean, I totally agree. There is a lot of hunger for it. I mean, even what's happening, you know, at Asbury and these campuses, students that are, you know, in the evangelical denominations, all kinds of denominations, it does show this hunger in this next generation because we're in desperate times. I mean, we, we need a supernatural touchdown, you know, from heaven. So the question is then, because I know, you know, with your vanquish Academy, you, you and Kelly, your wife really have a desire to equip and empower this next generation to walk, you know, in the realities of what you have experienced. So the question is how, how do we in the church help foster that? Because there's also a lot of fear. There's apprehension because of the counterfeits. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, even a lot in the church, we don't even know the difference. I mean, I know a lot of people that, you know, the, the new age terminology, the phrasing that we use, uh, there's there's so many similarities. And so what have been some of the things that, that you have felt you know, we need to be paying attention to, you know, in moving forward so that we can do this right, you know, to, to equip the next generation. Amen. No, absolutely right. Um, I, wow, that's a big question. Um, I I guess I'll just kind of start telling some things that are on my heart about it, but, um, you know, I, I was privileged to be able to kind of have more of an intimate setting with some of these spiritual mothers and fathers. And so, um, you know, it. Um, I think one of the greatest hindrances to the prophetic movement in these days is that there's not life on life, uh, real um, mentoring, real, um, we're too often we're in a uh, more of a um, corporate sort of Mm. even systematized setting and we're still not being known. Um, Mm. And and the Bible says we ought to know those that labor among us. And, and yeah, that I know that context is referring to leadership, but I also believe just in general as the body, we need, we don't, we don't know how to get into a setting where we can be known. And Mm. I think that's where we have to start to bring the prophetic movement. We have to start to know one another by the spirit and, and the younger generation needs, they don't need to see a standard of the prophetic as something that's happening on a stage, um, you know, because that is not, it, it's keeping us in an orphan mentality, in an orphan striving. Yes. And and it, it, it just, I'm not saying there's not a place for the stage. Absolutely. I'm just saying that I think the majority of where God wants to take the prophetic movement is in is in homes is in the place of yes. life on life of getting yes. into this place where you can be known where yes. fathers and mothers can bring correction you know where there can be uh you know real wisdom poured into lives and um Amen. so that's kind of what i'm feeling it, it's i guess i get troubled by how much um i don't know what the word is focus the, the prophetic is given in terms of the performance of it in, you know, on a, on a stage, yeah. on a platform. Mm-hmm. And again, there's, there's a place for influence. There's a place right. to be on a platform. There's a place right. to be on a stage, but I think it, we're setting a standard to say, this is the mm-hmm. outcome of our way. If you follow us, here's our outcome. Yeah. And yeah. instead of seeing that the outcome of our way is, healthy family, transformed lives, fruit of the Holy spirit, Mm -hmm. you know, um, you know what I'm saying? Like, Hey, and so we've got so much dysfunction that's happened in the prophetic really because of that. Yeah. Well, I, and I just want to put a big exclamation point on that because you're talking about relationships, you know, and, and I've always said it, you've got to start at home. It starts in your marriage. It starts with your family. 
you know, you, when you tie together what we've been talking about dreams and how the Lord speaks to us through dreams, I know I experienced the first number of years of prophetic dreams. It had to do with me first, me getting free of junk. And then it was my family, you know, my church, I, you know, I didn't get things for the nation, you know, for a while because you have to know these realities at home and, and it yes. has to be healthy. And so that is so important, you know, to be connected. And obviously, you know, you talk about the stage in our culture, it, it's online activity, which, you know, both you and I were online. Yep. <laughs> we know there's a place for that. Yep. But this is not the standard, you know, mm -hmm. that this isn't, it's not like you just decide I'm going to have a platform, you know, and then prophesy. This is, I mean, I know for me, this is the fruit of, you know, over 25, 30 years of ministry, you know, yeah. before this even happened. So um, I just really ap appreciate that, especially from someone, you know, in, in your generation to to say that, uh, yeah. because we don't know how to connect. I mean, isn't this even what, you know, the Asbury, you know, renewal outpouring, what they're yeah. looking for is authentic encounter. This is yeah. real. That's raw. It's without all the hype, yeah. you know, without the stage. So, um, yeah, that I, I just wanted to say amen to that. Very, very yes. powerful. Absolutely. I, and I, I, I'm grateful, uh, to you, Wanda and others like you that are turning your eyes and your heart to that next generation. Um, because, and I, and I think you realize like, wow, there's a need for mothers and fathers. Um, and, and that just being real and authentic. And there's a need. I love the book you just came out with. I bought it, by the way. Oh, uh, cool. Words, words to pray by. Mm -hmm. um, because I do find, you know, early, early on the prophets that came into my life. I mean, these guys were so solid in the word. Mm -hmm. And I mean, everything was word, word, word. And I'm so thankful that I had a healthy foundation in that because I do believe our prophetic at times is a bit kind of it, it vaguely crosses lines into new age at times mm -hmm. and i and yeah. i feel like more and more the enemy wants to dilute mm -hmm. uh the power of god's word in it and namely he wants to dilute what the testimony or, or the uh, the spirit of prophecy actually it is it's the testimony of jesus christ that's good and that's what we, I really feel like if we can just hone in, that's the main goal of all prophetic ministries, the yes. testimony of Jesus Christ. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, that's great. So, yeah, that just some thoughts that I have. Yeah, that's very helpful because I know a, a lot of people who follow my channel, they're always asking because a lot of them are moms and dads, some of our grand grandparents, you know, and we're concerned for the next generation. I mean, I know I've told people before, I'm, I'm going to be around a long time. I'm going for 120. So, you know, I'm, I'm only half done and I'm yes. looking to, you know, to this, the next, you know, two generations, because we're in this whole reset that we're going through this, this kingdom era that we mm -hmm. know that we're entering, you know, heaven manifesting on earth. I mean, this is what I believe God is wanting to do is, is for the ecclesia to really shine forth the testimony of Jesus, you know, yes. who God is, you know, to the world. This is what he's been preparing us for. But because of all the bad habits and all of the poisoned roots that have been here for so long, it's going to take another generation. I mean, I've, I said, said this on our, my last video. I think it's going to take at least another generation to change some of these mindsets and these, yeah. these doctrinal things that have gotten so embedded in us. I'm not saying it's going to take a generation to see breakthrough, you know, to see right. miraculous outcomes, that kind of thing. But some of these uh, doctrines of men and expectations that have been really subpar to what God ever had in mind for us. And But this is the opportunity and the invitation that we have for those that want to see that and be a part of it. This is the opportunity. You know, and so to hear that the next generation is is wanting that, because you know, my heart is how can we do this together to, you know, fix the mistakes of the past, but then pave some new way, you know, towards the future. Because, you know, even to your point of the the new age things, you know, the enemy has had had his hands, you know, Hollywood, uh, and the occult, they have tapped into the spirit. And yeah, it's, it's the bad stuff, but the fact is the church has been so afraid of it 
you know, we've, we've given over that realm to the wrong side and yes. where we're headed. I believe the Lord is saying, no, now show them the real thing. Okay. Absolutely. I mean, you think about the, the story in, in Acts of Philip going to Samaria where Simon, the witch, you know, the sorcerer had the yeah. whole city under a spell because yeah. of his signs and wonders. All Philip had to do was come in and show the real thing. And it broke that spell, the witchcraft over the whole city. And so this is what we need to prepare for you know, to, to do it right. So. Absolutely. And, and just to add to that, one of the frustrations I think that I've had, and it's not necessarily at any one, it just, I think it's stirring in my spirit is that um, I think so often in the prophetic, we're not engaged in the real fight. And um, I guess what I'm saying is I, many times I think that we aren't taking aim at the things God's calling us to take aim at. Mm. And, but, and because of that, we're not seeing the type of breakthroughs that God wants us to, to see. Um, you know, here's, here's the way I relate it is that the spirit of prophecy is to bring forth the testimony of Jesus. And when his testimony is established in the earth, wherever it's at, it is, it manifests the kingdom and it destroys the works of the devil. Right. First John says, for this purpose was the son of God manifested to destroy the works of the devil. And I believe that too often our prophetic isn't, isn't really revealing and manifesting Christ. And therefore works of darkness are still uh, being con able to continue on. And what wow. it's doing is it's still dominating our culture. And too often we're playing our church religious prophetic games instead of being like an Elijah mm -hmm. in this hour to confront Ahab and Jezebel. Mm -hmm. And I believe that um, I think we're seeing a generation being swept away, but there's an Elijah that's coming forth on the scene and it's going to start to come with power demonstration there. And why? Because they're going to be so focused on Jesus Christ, on seeing him revealed, on seeing his uh, finished work at the cross established in the earth. And so I, that's kind of what I feel is that yeah. um, God is, he's changing, he's changing things up in the prophetic a lot. Mm -hmm. And he's getting rid of this. Um, I, I don't know even what you want to call it, maybe a polish to the prophetic. He's got to get back. We need the fear of the Lord in America. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, those yep. in the earth, judges, rulers, kings, they need the fear of the Lord in the earth. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's not going to happen with the prophetic movement the way it is. It's got to come forth out of an Elijah. And it's not because a bunch of people are just angry and mad. It's mm -hmm. going to be, be because they are jealous for God's glory mm -hmm. and they are insistent upon shining light, upon seeing uh, what Jezebel is doing to bring a generation in bondage and saying no more Th this can't happen on our watch anymore we have to go to the gates where this is taking place we got to take back the gates into our families our homes our children or we're about to lose mm -hmm. a generation so um anyway i'm i'm like urgent about it but that's some of what i see you know we've had a lot of controversy recently within the prophetic movement about you know you're true you're false and again i don't think it's bad to wrestle uh, you know, to, we should have some challenge. We should have some debate, healthy debate um, about things. But I think that we are so quick. Um, we're so we're so religiously minded. We don't understand where the real false prophets are at. We we're yeah. like we're throwing stones at one another. Yeah. And I don't really believe these people are false. They might need some correction in some areas. I don't really know. I'm just saying that mm -hmm. I think we're addressing things all the while a generation is being swept away yeah. in a flood of filth by the prophets of Baal and Ashtra coming out of Hollywood, coming out of, you know, all of these other places. So yeah. Um, anyway. <laughs> no, that it's very true, Andrew. And you know, what, what I've seen and what I've been saying lately is the importance of not only seeing it, you know, you talk about being targeted, but also the the idea of our agreement, because this is what these schisms is causing, it, is we're not in agreement. And the enemy loves that. That's his whole point, because he knows our agreement is what empowers our authority. 
you know, that what you're talking about, you know, that, that Elijah call to, to declare, you know, the word of the Lord. I mean, let's face it. We've been doing that for a whole generation. Yeah. Uh, you know, the prophetic movement, we've done a really good job of declaring, decreeing. My issue is, okay, what does home life look like? You know, yeah. what we talked about earlier in the conversation, it's not a matter that we don't need to, to go after these things, but what we have missed is we've been focusing so much on that. We've let relationships slip away. We, yeah. We've let our own family slip away. And so this is, I think, the wake up call that I see these things merging, converging, yeah. because we are in a desperate time, you know, that we do need to take a stand. But at the same time, we've got to reach and and hold each other's hand, you know, it, together. And I, to me, this latest, you know, flurry uh, in the prophetic movement, it is a wake up call that that we need to discern rightly. And we really need to choose our battles wisely. I mean, yeah. like you say, there's there's issues. OK, there's there's yeah. things that need to be dealt with. Yeah. But we're on a battlefield right now and we've got a real enemy. Yes. And do we even know what that really is? You know, right. and, and I wanted to go back to something uh, you said, just to ask if you may, might have more clarity in terms of of targeting. You mentioned something about uh, that. We, we don't know how to target things. If I is that what you said? Can you yeah. unpack that a little bit more? Yeah. You know, <laughs> I guess, um, you know, God, relig the spirit of religion or, or religious structures, they like to filter things. God doesn't have the filter that we have. He tells the truth. Jesus came on the earth and basically the scripture says he came to testify to the truth. Mm -hmm. And that word in the Greek truth means reality. In other words, Jesus said, I'm going to show you what's real. I'm going to show you, I'm going to pull back curtains and show you who's a snake, who's a viper, uh, who's, you know, <laughs> who's a man and uh, a true Isra Israelite in whom there is no guile. I'm going to show you what's what I'm going to, I'm going to unveil reality for you. Wow. And I think in some ways, uh, our current religious structures and, and maybe the religious mindset is we need to stay in our bubble and, and filter things. Instead of letting the light of God shine however it wants to shine, let him show us what's happening in darkness so that we can uh, effectively take aim and mm -hmm. bring the kingdom of God into these places, destroy the works of the devil. Right. But I feel so often we're, uh, we're kept from it and, we're, and we pretend that these things aren't happening. We yeah. pretend there's not a global elite uh, operating behind the scenes, um, infusing our culture with witchcraft. We we don't like to talk about the witch covens that are operating behind some of the highest levels of government and all of these institutions. And and if we go there, it's like no, we need to filter that for you. That's you know that's uh, whatever. Um, yeah. And I hope this makes sense. I just I get troubled by it because I, I, I get dreams. God gives me dreams. He takes me in these dreams and he shows me what's happening in darkness. And then sometimes I'll try to talk to the church about it. And they're saying, that's ridiculous. Come back in the bubble over here. Let's live our, our nice, uh, comfortable life. And I'm thinking, I'm made to go to war. Not, not to just for war. I'm made to go bring forth Jesus Christ's victory into the earth. And I want to see every place that the devil is holding people captive. I want to see those places broke open. I want to see the works of the, the enemy completely destroyed. And I think the prophetic needs a bit more of a warfare mentality to say, it's time to go into the places that are occupied by giants. And we need to start to rise up and pull these things down. But it's going to require that we let God give us a really good look at what's actually taking place. Yeah. And I've found too many circles are just unwilling to talk about it. And I'm like, well, I'll give you, I'll give you a dream. The Lord gave me a dream <clears throat> and I was on a road with a prophet and uh, this prophet's a good, a great person. I'm not going to mention the name, but a great person and, and even a great prophet, but we came to a T in the road a T intersection and you could go left or you could go right. And it, it didn't mean politically left or politically right. It just meant there were two directions. And I knew that if you, uh, whatever way the prophetic went. So if the prophetic went left, I knew that direction would be 
um, everybody would be um, excited to talk about the things of God, the things of uh, the realm of glory, the, the outpouring of the spirit, revival, um, those kinds of things. But they were not, I knew those who went left, they were not willing to let God's light shine on areas that were taking place in darkness mm. uh, in order to see what was going on. Mm. Now, those who went right, those were the ones who said, Lord, show me whatever you will. I, I won't filter it. I'll let you show me and I'll, I'll begin to contend and pray into it. Wow. And in the dream, this prophet went left and I went right. And in the dream, the spirit of prophecy came on me and said, those who go left, they're not in sin, but those who go right, they will receive the greatest spoils of war. Wow. And this is what I believe God's saying is you're not going to get the spoils of a whole generation that are being held up in the walls of darkness. If you're unwilling to go into that realm, you've got, we got to get there, but we can't go there. Darkness doesn't need to be our focus. The devil doesn't need to be our fascination. Jesus does, yeah. uh, but we cannot be afraid to let him take us into those realms. Mm. Afraid, we got to go there with him. Yeah. Um, so that, yeah. I hope that makes sense yeah. what I'm saying. No, totally. Actually, it reminds me of a dream that I had. Uh, it was years ago, but Jesus doing that very thing. Actually, in the dream, I I was following him. It was very dark, but I could hear him praying in the spirit underneath his breath and he was purposely leading me and and he was taking me down into it looked like a tunnel underground it was dark but before he did he even he even uh went on his knees and prayed over my feet and i forget the details but basically i knew he was saying wanda i i need you to come here into unfamiliar places into the darkness this is where i'm taking you if you'll follow but it was very close i had to stay right up close to him you know yeah. to go there and I think the word had to do with going into unfamiliar places, but yeah. you're absolutely right. If, if we're not willing to look. And so, you know, it kind of bears the question, what, what makes us so afraid of seeing that, you know, if, if we don't know how to handle it, is it going to cause us to change? I mean, I know that's some of what I see that if yeah. we really would face and see what's going on, number one, we have to admit we've been totally blinded right. and, and we've bought into some things that we thought we were so right about. Um, I think we're all going to be humbled in that, you know, perhaps we might be overwhelmed. I mean, sometimes I think it shows that we haven't prepared ourselves through the word of God and in our spirit to be able to realize we have the authority over that, regardless of how bad it is, because that that fear, you know, has seeped in these last two years as more things are exposed about some of the wicked things that are going on, you know, the responses I'm hearing a lot of fear, you yeah. know, that, that we just never thought that these things could actually happen, that, that people could actually be so evil and so wicked. Right. Um, and so this is part of the, you know, the journey that we've been in is, is kind of growing a tough skin while yeah. keeping a sensitive heart. Absolutely. Um, but, but I, I love the, the picture that, that you give because there is a price to it. There is a, a cost. And, and I'm so glad how he showed it and said that those who maybe focus more on revival and all the good things, they're not living in sin. They're not wrong. Mm -mm. Um, you know, and, and perhaps it is some of, you know, not everyone has the grace, you know, yep. to go these different directions, but obviously in the dream, you, God gave you the grace. You knew you were called. Yeah. You, you went where you knew your heart, you know, was taking you and you were willing to not follow the crowd. And right. I think that's an important part as well. Um, and I think too, that it's, I think many prophets <clears throat> or, you know, those in the prophetic oftentimes are speaking to things they don't actually have revelation on. And, um, that's one of the things that I think bothered me was you had people that would, uh, come against some of the things that God was showing me, but he was showing them to me. It wasn't, uh, I just didn't think it up one day. These things I was, it was revelation that came by the spirit and in dreams. And, and so often the, the pushback came from people who just felt like, nah, you know, it was like, well, you don't have any revelation on it. And that's where I think we have to be better at yielding to the Holy spirit and saying, Hey, they might have revelation on something that I don't yet. And I need to pray into it. I yeah. think we would do a lot better if we yeah. would just really wait to get 
real counsel from heaven? Can we just stand in his counsel and hear from him yeah. um, so that we would be able to speak his word and change the hearts of people? I've, we would change situations mm -hmm. we could actually speak from revelation yeah. instead of opinion or right. whatever the case is. Yeah. Uh, well, and it's not, it, it's not only revelation from him, but also revelation from each other, because you know how it is. You get with someone else that has that prophetic anointing. It doubles that, that a aspect and, and that input, you know, from Holy spirit, because we're each seeing a different part and that's where it really grows. And here again, it's the downside of social media of instant words, you know, and as soon as you get something, you know, we jump to it. And, and I know I've, I've had to search my own heart these last two years. And I've, I've posted about it recently of there's been some presumption. I know in some of the things that I've said, um, it, it doesn't change the initial revelation of what God showed me and what yeah. I saw, but in terms of the fine tuning of what that really means and then how it's applied, that's the tricky part. And I think it does, you know, it should cause us to back off, off a little bit and be willing to wait, you know, until it's really clear because ultimately I believe, uh, you know, prophecy is also supposed to encourage and always give us hope. Yes. Even if it's a warning, yep. there will always be a lifeline to it. And, yep. and there should always be a sense of, wow, this is what God is doing, even in the midst of, you know, whatever it is. And so I, I think God tests, well, I know he tests us, all of us, you know, in giving us some of these things and purposely, you know, seeing if we're going to wait long enough because he'll only give us a piece. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> are you going right. to run with this? Or are you going to wait for the rest of it? You know, uh, yeah. you know, I'll admit, I haven't always passed that test, you know, and I'm sure he'll <laughs> test me again in the future. Yeah. Uh, but this is where that connection comes as well that you were getting to of, of conferring, you know, with each other and, and why these kinds of relationships are, are so, so powerful and, and so healthy. Um, so I know we're running up on, on an hour here, Andrew, and I, it's obvious we need to do this again because there's a lot that we can unpack in, yes. in all of this. But I did want to give an opportunity. Do you feel like, because I want you to pray for people too, uh, just yeah. to, in their prophetic gifting and maybe how they've been stirred you know, through our conversation. But anything that you feel like the Lord is doing right now that you are contending for or that you feel like we need to be joining together for the church or for the nation? A hundred percent. Yes. Um, uh, let me tell you what happened. Um, so 2000, well, I had an encounter on the day that Asbury revival started to break out. Mm. Um, before I say that, I'll tell you what happened to me in 2016. Um, Francis Asbury, who the Asbury theological seminary is named after for those that you don't know. Um, he, actually came to me in a dream and this was 2016 oh my and you knew it was him yeah i knew it was him but i actually didn't know who he was like um like i knew that i'm looking at a man called francis named francis asbury wow um, now i had heard of the asbury revival just very vaguely i'd, I'd heard the, the about the old one you mean in the, 1970 in the 70s yeah right. 1970 and so i that was my only grid for asbury and so when I saw this man in my dream in 2016 named Francis Asbury, you know, I don't know, you probably know how dreams are. Sometimes you just know who's standing before right. you. You don't yep. know how you know, but you just know. Right. Well, that's how it was with this man. And he looks at me and he says, Andrew, it's time to go with me. And then he said, um, you're going to need these, these books. And he hands me Francis Frangipane, three books of Francis Frangipane. One was uh the three battlegrounds the second was the jezebel spirit and the third one was this day we fight wow. and um so i wake up from that dream and i'm thinking ha huh, this is interesting francis asbury francis frangipane well francis means free man and and so i really felt like there was a, a couple prophetic layers to this dream but one was i felt like he was saying andrew just like um Francis Asbury was a circuit writer, uh, a preacher, evangelist. In the same way, I want to bring a circuit. I want to circuit this nation with spiritual warfare to free man. I want to. I want to bring a deliverance anointing into this generation. I want to tear down Jezebel. I want to take the fight to the battlegrounds. I want to raise up a militant. This day we fight. 
uh, attitude in the church because it's time. We have to. We we don't have any more option right now. I think if we just would recognize what time it is, we'd realize we're about to be swept away uh, with filth and darkness unless we rise up in the grace of Jesus Christ. I think we're about to enter into Isaiah 60 when gross darkness is on the face of, of the people, you know, and on the earth. It's in that context that God's light shines upon us. His glory rises over us. Yep. And I believe we're coming to that. So that was, that dream took place. I've read all three of those books, um, The Jezebel Spirit, The Three Battlegrounds, and This Day We Fight. Well, I thought, well, that's interesting. I didn't do much study, to be honest, on Francis Asbury. But fast forward, I on the day that Asbury revival broke out here, just forgot what day it was, maybe the 8th, February 8th or 9th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And on that morning, before I had heard any news about it, Francis Asbury is in my dream. I don't see his face. I just know he's present. And he walks me into a room uh, called the War Room for the Nation. And um, there was another man there named Jeremiah Johnson, if you know Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. And Jeremiah was in there. Uh, he had his Bible, and there was another book laying next to the Bible. And I know that Francis pointed down at it, and it was This Day We Fight by Francis Frangipane. And um, Jeremiah opened that book and the whole book was underlined in the dream. Hmm. So I woke up out of that dream and then sure enough, come to find out, oh, Asbury outpouring is happening. Here's what I felt. I felt like God was shouting at, at us and saying, this, you know, this is a nice little outpouring to encourage, but even more than that, it's a sign that the fight is on. I, I'm going to raise up a fight. You're in the, he brought me into the war room for the nation. He's saying, look, I am going to go to war for this nation. The battle belongs to the Lord. And I want my people to rise up with me in this hour to say, you know, someday men's faith may fail them, but it's not today. This day we fight. And I just really feel that on my heart. Like God's saying, come on, my sons and my daughters, rise up in the strength of Christ, in the grace of God, begin to employ your weapons of righteousness in the right hand and the left, begin to advance. It's not a day to shrink back. We're not of those who shrink back under perdition. We're of those who believe even to the saving of our souls. We got to go forward in this hour, begin to call out these, you know, giants and uh, pray, pray for massive breakthrough. And, um, you know, I'll say the last thing, along those lines is I was in a, uh, uh, what was I? I was in a, the gym recently and at the gym, I heard the Holy spirit whisper to me. He said, Andrew, if you want to help awaken a generation, start to preach on the rise and fall of civilization. I said, huh? Okay. Did I really hear that God? I'm, I'm trying to like ask him, did I hear that? I, I don't know if I heard that, but where did that come from? So I go to the coffee shop right after the gym and I'm in line and I look, just happen to look to my left. There's a guy sitting on a table with a stack of books and the top book says the rise and fall of civilizations. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I go over to him and I said, I said, bro, why do you have this book? And he goes, well, honestly, I'm not really sure. I'm, I'm doing my own research right now. He's like, I feel like there's a connection between um, our, our spiritual and, and moral uh, standing in our culture and the rise and fall of civilization. Wow. And I, I go, bro, are you a Christian? And he's like, no, not, no, not at all. And I'm thinking to myself, even the rocks are going to cry out. God's going to start to shout to everyone. It, I feel like wow. people are starting to recognize the darkness that, yeah. yes. in fact, I just heard a testimony of a very, very powerful influencer. I'm not saying he knows the Lord yet, uh, personally, but he's starting to come and open his heart. He, he's got a, a millions of followers across the earth. And he said, the one, I was an atheist until I started to see how dark the darkness was and how evil things could be. And it made me realize if things could be this dark and this evil, there has to be an opposite uh, reality of God and his light. And so I think God's starting to bring an awakening, even to those that are lost, even those that are world there, 
they're God conscious. Even the Bible says the heart uh, or eternity is in the heart of every man. I think God is pricking the conscience of, of a people of saying, whoa, how is it so dark? How is it so evil right now? And it's, I believe it's going to create uh, an, a vacuum of hunger. People are going to just yeah. be so hungry to find life, to find God. Mm -hmm. But again, uh, this day we fight, we're at a late hour in America. It's not hopeless. In fact, I've got more hope than I've ever had. Mm -hmm. I, seriously, I really do. And mm -hmm. I know you do too. Yes. Uh, yeah. But I do believe God is saying it's church as we've known it is over. Right. Um, the mm -hmm. way things have been, it's over. And I'm going to rise up a militant, loving army of God, you know, mm -hmm. and they're going to start to take back territory yeah. from the enemy. No. Amen, Andrew. That is so good. And, you know, it it looks different on everyone, but because what you're speaking of is resolve, determination, perseverance. You know, we can't quit. We can't give up. It's where our faith does take a stand. And, and I'm going to be speaking this Sunday at, at Crossroads. And one of the points is understanding true faith always requires action. It's not just a mindset or a belief. True belief requires action. Yes. And so, you know, we got to put our, our, word, our, our actions where our words are, you know, to, to walk this out. And so uh, I agree, you know, it is dark and I know, and I do want to say, cause I know people, they still get nervous. You know, we start talking about we're at gross days of darkness and, you know, we're headed for some turbulent times. Hmm. It's what it is unto. And, and I want to, again, emphasize it is unto transformation, God's glory. We're seeing the taste of it now. Yeah. It's going to be so overwhelming that regardless of the, of the measure of darkness that's here, it will not be able to compare to Absolutely. the glory of God that's going to come over top of it. So, yeah. you know, all these words of, yeah, the enemy's going to pull out all the stops, but God hasn't, <laughs> he's got so much more you know, in store for us, you know, for, for, if we can just stand in that. So I just like you to pray, uh, as the spirit leads, you know, just to help people to get a hold of that courage. And especially just for the, the prophetic gift, it, you know, to be stirred and those who are, might be a little bit newer in it, you know, how they can grab a hold of this and have the right heart posture to receive that from the Lord and to really go in it. So, uh, just go ahead and pray as you feel awesome. led, Andrew. Thank you, Wanda. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I'll say this too, that God doesn't call anyone to fight uh, expecting to lose. In other words, mm. he doesn't call you to war to lose. He doesn't call you to battle to go lose. He, he's, a vic he's a victor. He's a conqueror. And yeah. we are that with him. So um, anyway, so Father, I pray that over everyone here watching, those that will watch later on, I just pray that every person under the sound of my voice right now would receive an impartation of faith in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Lord, I pray that there would come forth a, a new uh, personal awakening and revival by the power of your Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord, that you would begin to release the fire of your Holy Spirit, a, a fresh baptism of fire. And God, I pray that there would come forth uh, just a charge out of heaven uh, that you would put forth on every person to come to go forward, to move and advance with you, that, Lord, we might be those who keep in step right now with the Holy Spirit. Lord, I know you're marching forward. You are not shrinking back in this hour, and I know you're sounding a trumpet. You're sounding an alarm. This day we fight, and, Lord, I believe that the battles belong to you. You're going to do some things in our day and in our generation and for this nation and even the nations of the earth. That, that bring forth the glory of God like never before. We thank you, God, that the glory of God shall cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. We thank you, God, um, that there is an increasing government and peace in the name of Jesus coming forth into this earth. And Lord, I pray even right now that uh, you would begin to release freedom to every son, to every daughter, from every place that Jezebel has taunted the armies of the living God, uh, that has taunted families, has taunted uh, their children. I pray, God, even right now, break the back of witchcraft. 
I pray that you would break the scepter of the wicked off of the land yes. because we declare and decree today that this land has been allotted to the righteous in Jesus name. And I pray God begin to break the scepter that's brought uh, children under witchcraft, under perversion. We say, God, break the spell, break the spell off this generation. We pray for a sweeping move of God to awaken a whole generation, to bring a jailbreak out of perversion, out of bondage, out of confusion, out of darkness, God. I pray that, Lord, you would begin to use every person that's watching this right now to begin to shine the light. I just declare over you, the Lord says, you are a city set on a hill, and your light shall not be hidden. And I just say that those even across this nation who are sitting in the valley of the shadow of death, they in that place are going to behold and see a great light. I just say, Lord, let your light shine in this hour. Let the prophetic gifts begin to be released. I pray, God, a, an awakening move in the prophetic, Lord. I pray that the testimony of Jesus would be heralded across this nation, across our land, into every family. And Lord, I also pray would you begin to create prophetic communities, prophetic families across America, across even across the nations of the earth, mm -hmm. set people back into uh, family, relational connections. I pray that God, the old would teach the younger. Lord, I pray there would just be this uh, move of prophetic and apostolic discipleship mm -hmm. and family. God, would you do it now? Lord, we just thank you. We thank you, God. I thank you for Wanda. I thank you for her voice. I thank you for her ministry. Thank you, God, for this prophetic mother, uh, even for the nation, even for the nations. And Lord, I just pray, give her a, a, a voice in this hour to help bring wisdom and clarity to this generation. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That was awesome. Andrew, man, I, I just love your heart, uh, you know, and, and your perspective. And we have a lot to learn. We, we've got a long way to go. Uh, yeah. A lot of people, you know, that are that are hungry for this. And so, you know, if, if you've hung with us this long, those of you who are watching, you know, be encouraged because the Lord wants to speak to you. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the voice of the Lord is for everybody. And he wants to speak to you, whether or not it's through dreams, through visions, through the word of God, he wants to speak to you to encourage you. And so, you know, as you've heard today, uh, just know that he's got some things specifically for you to do and, and to pray about, as Andrew said, you know, the, the words to pray by, you know, it, yeah, it is a great resource just to put those prayers into action. Uh, but I did want to tell you uh, about Andrew's ministry. And I want to tell you, and then Andrew, you can even tell people uh, a little bit more about Vanquish Academy. You can find him at Vanquish PW, that's for prophetic warriors.com. Uh, tell us about it, Andrew. Yeah. Uh, so, um, you know, our heart is really just to um, begin to provide resources and training for prophetic warriors. Um, you know, years ago, I had a dream, a prophet came over to me and he said, your garment, your prophetic garment is for war. And so my heart is, I want to help equip people uh, to really begin to win in battle, um, to advance the kingdom of God, whatever sphere of society they're at. You know, if you're in business, you're in, you know, education, wherever you're, you're called to, right. how do we take the weapons of our warfare and bring the kingdom right. of God get breakthrough. So that's what this website's all about. Um, okay. That's what we do. And we have an academy. It's currently going. It's a 12-week academy. And so after this one's done, we'll probably uh, start another one, uh, likely okay. in the fall. Right. Um, but, okay. Yeah. Because yeah, here, look at all these all these teachers here. Oh, look at that face. That's pretty cool. <laughs> all these people. I tell you, this is pretty amazing. Uh, Vanquish Academy. So look for it again, because uh, this is the first one, but you will be doing it again. And also for those of you who are on Facebook, uh, follow Andrew on Facebook because he posts a lot of his dreams here uh, that are really, really powerful. And then you do have a private group as well. Is that right? Yeah, it's a private free group. So if you go to Facebook and look up this Vanquish one? Prophetic Warriors, oh, maybe it's on there. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's it. Yep. Yes. Yeah, so okay. You can just 
click to join there. And um, there's about 3,000 uh, members in there and a lot of, um, I, I'm the only one that posts in it just because I, <laughs> yeah. I, okay. just, because I just want to streamline it. But, you know, everybody has access to comment and, you know, all of that stuff. But I, yeah. I just try to keep us updated with dreams, with prophetic insight, uh, different things like that. Yeah. No, I think that's awesome. And so that those are the ways, you know, that y'all can find Andrew and listen to what, uh, you know, he shares because the, the dreams really are powerful. Again, it's, it's also, uh, with intercession because we want to keep praying, praying effectively that, that what we're doing is on target. So, um, you know, I hope this has encouraged you, you know, please leave the, the comments below and share this video. There's so much here, uh, you know, that we kind of touched on and that Andrew shared, uh, that is worthy of even a, a re-listen. I do want to alert those of you on my channel uh, who will be watching this this coming Sunday, February 26th. I am going to be preaching at Crossroads. Uh, you can watch it live stream at our 1030 a.m. service. That's Eastern time. I'll put the links below. I'll, I'll put all these links below, okay? If you... And just a reminder for those of you who wonder, where's the information? You have to look below the video and there's a little arrow. You click on it and then it opens up the description box. All these links will be there. But uh, for this Sunday, if you want to watch at 1030 uh, Eastern time, I'm going to be uh, speaking on critical thinking in a culture of critics. And we're going to be talking about unbelief. We're going to be talking about the word and the spirit. We're going to talk about the difference between being a kingdom thinker and a critic. So uh, I'm going to have some fun sharing it. Uh, so Wanda, be sure to tune in. <laughs> you get, you don't even know. I, I kid you not. I promise you this. The Lord told me, he said, we don't need critical spirits. We need critical thinkers. He <laughs> just, I'm telling you, it was oh like my goodness. Two, two days ago. I've been pondering this and you just come out and say this. <laughs> Unbelievable. Okay. That's, I got to watch this now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's an, a confirmation for me then too. Okay, so everyone's going to want to tune in. And, and if you don't get a chance to watch the live stream, I, I always put these things on my YouTube channel in the playlist, latest videos by Wanda Alger. I can share it there so you can always watch the replay. But Andrew, this has been great. You know, I know that we need to do this again. It, it's just been yeah. such a joy. Uh, and, and just thank you so much for being here. Absolutely, Wanda. Thank you so much. It's always an honor to just be with you. And thank you again for allowing me to share my heart. Amen. All right, everybody, that's it. Until next time, be blessed and keep the faith.